Hey, kiddies, it's Beep Bop time. Hey, welcome to the Game Dungeon. Today we're covering Bip Bop 2. This is a breakout clone. Now, I know what you're thinking. A breakout game? Really, Ross? You're just wasting my time now. Well, before you give up, know this game has a story to it, and I think something terrible may have happened. So let's find out. Bip Bop 2. <laughs> now, you may wonder, why are we starting on 2 and not 1? Well, it'll be best if I just show you. This video isn't going to be a playthrough exactly, but I'm going to show you what I think are all the highlights so you won't miss anything. All right, let's get going. Claw, I'm the most ultimate ghost ball beast. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. So I guess this is our backstory, very straight and to the point. Now, surprisingly, the breakout genre actually had competition for storyline, since the game Arkanoid was kind of the gold standard, and it had an intro talking about blowing up a mothership, being trapped in space. So I think Bip Bop is already falling behind a little bit, but we'll see what happens. And here's the game. Now, the first thing I noticed... Oh, we're done. Okay, we beat it. That's the end of the episode. See you next time. No, not really. Okay, level two. What I was going to say is the first thing I noticed is this game is chunky sized. This looks like the thickest ball and paddle I've seen in a breakout game. And this background is looking kind of tacky. Like this looks like it's a promotional game made for a local car dealership. Level three. Man, the author likes his animated backgrounds, huh? It messes with my head a little bit while playing, though it's not too bad. Now's a good time to mention another mechanic in this game. The ball always bounces off your paddle in one of two ways, so it's very predictable. Unfortunately, this means you can get caught in endless loops in some areas. Well, to break it up, at any time you can fire a giant bullet out of your paddle to change the course of the ball. And yes, it's as chunky as everything else in this game. Let's keep going. Level 4. Yeah, these backgrounds are getting to me. Hey, there's a question mark in the center. What is it? What could it be? Well, we're gonna find out. Ah! Yep. All a question mark means is you have to hit the block more than five times. Wonderful. Moving on. S&M. Classy. The wobbly text combined with bit bop in the background with the moving lights really shows off the sophistication of this game. So yeah, just in case you forgot, the name of this game is Bit Bop 2 by s and Software. s and Software makes you cool. Oh jeez, this background. But hey, we have an Ankh in the center. What does that do? You know what it does. Yeah, extra life. All right, I'll spare you from the rest of this level. Oh my God. Okay, if anyone is prone to epilepsy, you might want to minimize this video. Bip Bop, s &M. Just in case you forgot what game and company this is since a minute ago. s and Software rules the universe. Look, this is rough to watch, but I guarantee you this is harder for me than it is for you. I have to concentrate on this ball and stare intensely at it while these lights keep trying to savage my brain. Let's pray the next level is better. Okay, this is easier on the eyes. But what's that face? Well, when you hit it, that makes the brick counter go up. Yikes. In fact, this is the first sign I'm getting that something is off about this game. If I saw that on the wall in Doom or Heretic, I wouldn't think twice about it. But in this colorful breakout game, it seems kind of sinister. Now you'll see your destiny. Moving on. All right, nothing special here. The background looks like TV static shown in slow motion. You know, I think I know what's going on here. This came out in the early days of VGA graphics, and I bet the creator couldn't wait to go hog wild with all the effects he could cram into the game. 
doesn't matter if it distracts the player or maybe looks ugly, we can make all these colors fade in and out, so by god, that's what we're gonna do. This sort of thing happens throughout gaming history. Now that we can make games look almost any way we want, we're starting to see it die down, but I swear, when game designers get a new toy to work with, it becomes their answer to everything. Next level. Okay, yeah, it's not my imagination. There's something dark inside this game. A teddy bear with glowing red eyes. Well, my logo has a cow with glowing eyes, so I don't really have room to talk. But doesn't the tone feel different now than when we first started? See, this is what distinguishes smaller games from big mainstream ones for me. Stuff like this typically doesn't happen in a AAA title. Everything has to be approved by committees and publishers, whereas Bitbop 2, now that we've seen a possessed teddy bear, who knows where this game is going to take us. And don't worry, this won't be the last possessed teddy bear we talk about on this show. Let's see what's next. Well, besides more crimes against my eyes going on in the background, this level is pretty typical. Next. You're pretty funny looking. Ah, a new mechanic. When you hit the exclamation block, it changes the gate. Even though this is a simple concept, this drastically adds how long it takes to beat this level. Damn it! Feel the force, loser. Ah! Welcome to the next level! This is a special kind of hell because in addition to this background, it's easy to keep hitting that face and make the game take longer. In theory, you could play this level forever. Sorry for making you see this. Angered by your impressive progress, the ruler of the universe, who also incidentally was the creator of Dip Bop 2, begins to strike you repeatedly. Thinking fast, you press a key and abort the pummeling. Yeah, thinking fast. By the time I read that, he's probably smacked me at least 10 times. Let's get out of here. Oh, welcome to the next level. You're dead. Gotta love those kinds of games, huh? This actually reminds me of a level from Arkanoid. Okay, nothing else to really say here. Next level. Okay, we've just crossed some sort of line. I'm getting assaulted by the background again. The ball speed is noticeably faster, and of course, we have a close-up of a screaming woman with blood on her. Isn't this exactly what you expect from a breakout game? Like, out of all the images we could have to go with this game, this is what we landed on. Like I said earlier, there's something evil about this game. Let's keep going. I will crush your every hope and desire, sir. Bip. Damn it. I'm not used to this new speed yet. Ah! Bop. Okay, take a wild guess. Do you know what the next level is going to be? Well, here it is. The last level to this game. Two. Here, I'll cut to the chase. This is the ending we've all been waiting for. As you complete the 20th level, the evil spell cast by the ruler of the universe is broken. Nations rejoice. You gaze out across the dusky expanses where, due to your courage and quick reflexes, life and hope spring anew. Thanks to your efforts, the galaxy is free once again. No more will the powers of darkness reign over millions of innocent lives. Tales of your fortitude will live on for a thousand generations. But what's this in your back pocket? It appears to be a disc. It is, you fool! You cannot defeat me quite so easily! My dog, Duchess, has created a new and more venomous challenge! Behold the glorious power of Bip Bop 3! Suddenly, the disc vanishes from your grasp. Coward! You yell. At least give humanity a fighting chance. The quest is yours for the taking. You can have all the glory, excitement, and danger of Bip Bop 3 very easily. And for just a small amount of your feeble earthly currency. I accept your challenge, scurvy dog. This game is not over yet. 
Then we find out that was a man, not a woman screaming from an experimental film. Yeah, experimental. Where I come from, they call those snuff films. I'm pretty sure that's why they zoomed in on the photo. So you can't get a clear enough shot to prove the identity of the person if the police started asking questions. Well, I admit, I'm intrigued at this point. I mean, this ending far exceeded my expectations. It leaves me eager to find out what's next. I honestly have no idea what to expect. This game is filled with goofy moments masking a face of evil underneath it. Like, I entirely expect the sequel to have a funny dance routine with the ball beast or more dogs or something, followed by a choppy black and white video of somebody being stabbed in a parking lot. All bets are off with this game. So now's the time to tell you that Bitbop 2 is actually shareware. It was free for everyone to play with the idea that you'd hopefully buy the full thing, which included Bitbop 1 and 3. Check out the registration page. $20 for the full version. But that was back in 1993. What does it cost now? Is it abandonware? Well, here is where things get interesting. I did a search for Bitbop 3 and it's nowhere. I searched high and low and I only found one site that even acknowledged its existence. And I lost the link to that. No screenshots of it exist anywhere. You can't download it. It's like some sort of urban legend. Oh, there's plenty of documentation on Bitbop 2, but nothing on 3. I've never heard of something like this happening before, where the full version of a shareware game, in other words, a game with a free demo, completely disappears. We live in an age where obsessive archiving people would never let a video game disappear like this. But this sequel to a free game has vanished from existence. What happened? Is Bitbop 3 like that puzzle box from Hellraiser where if you play it, you get sucked into another dimension and that's it? No one is left to tell the tale? So I decided to go straight to the source. I searched the internet and hunted down the creator himself, Stuart Riffle. He's gone on to have a successful programming career since this was made. Worked on many games in electronic arts. Huh. Anyway, I found his contact info. He works at an independent company now, One Bit Labs. And hey, they're hiring. So I emailed Stuart Riffle and he replied. He was surprised I asked about it, but didn't actually have it backed up anywhere. He also said something about the harvest being complete. I didn't really understand that part. Anyway, what he did have were the original floppy disk versions of the game still lying around. He wasn't even sure if they worked, but he agreed to send me a copy. He didn't even charge me the $20. All he wanted was a vial of my blood and the exact time of my birth. He paid for shipping and everything. Can't argue with that. At this point, I feel like I'm more interested in seeing this game than anyone else in the world. But this is still such a dicey operation because I hate floppy disks. I hated them back then and I hate them now. You know why? Oh sure, they're slow and don't hold much data, but they're unreliable. Floppy disk went bad all the time back then. Now compound that with a 20 year old game and this is bad news. Floppy disks stored data with magnetized particles inside a film. So it's entirely possible that this could have lost some of its charge during this time. And computer data isn't like an audio cassette where things are just a little distorted if there are problems. No, it's pretty much all or nothing with computer data. So this is a long shot. Finally, I don't even have a floppy drive anymore. I got rid of mine almost 15 years ago, but my old man does. So I had the disc shipped to him and he tried to read it. So the big question, was the data recoverable? Yep. It sure was. So get ready. I'm going to show you the remaining Bitbop games and you're about to witness a game the internet has never seen before. And as far as I know, no one has ever seen it in at least 20 years. This is some deep vault stuff here. So let's go back to the beginning with the original Bitbop and find out what's in store. Here we go. Uh, 
Okay. Now, I hate seeing any game die out, but I have to admit, if we had lost this particular one, I'm not sure the world would be that much poorer for it. Besides the glorious CGA graphics here, I really don't like these controls. The paddle is always moving. You can only change the direction. I think you have to hit it dead center in the triangle in order to get it to bounce at an angle that benefits you. Also, I don't like how the game seems to read my mind. Because every time I was ready to give up on this, it would bounce towards the next level. And hey, am I really gonna quit if I just made it to the next level? Also, this game has infinite continues, so it kind of wants you to keep playing. Anyway, this is a very basic game. There's not much to show here, so I'm going to... Death awaits. Beware. Alright, this is the only message this game has given me so far. This isn't diminishing my theory that something happened to everyone that played this game before me. If I knew what was good for me, I would stop here. But again, this game keeps driving me forward every time I'm ready to quit. Really, while it is a little frustrating, there's nothing seemingly special about this game. The later levels spell out Bip Bop 1, and that's about it. And here is the end. I win. Yeah, I wasn't expecting much more than this, but this game is giving me a weird vibe. Have you ever seen that movie, The Box? About a box where if you press a button, someone you don't know dies? Well, that's sort of the feeling I'm getting from this right now. Uh, let's move on to Bitbop 3. Oh yeah, this is what we've been waiting for. Let's do this. Greetings, sir. Prepare to be bipped and bopped. Well, I'm as ready as I think anyone can be. Well, this looks pretty easy. And it is! I admit, I thought this would start off harder, since the trend back around this time was when you made an expansion to a game, it would be hard as nails, because the company figured, well, you played the first game, if you're buying this, you must be an expert. So here you go, expert. Looks like that's not the case here. I noticed my paddle has a new look, but it behaves exactly the same as the old one. Yeah, I don't know. So far this is feeling a little lazy with reusing the same assets. For a sequel, we should be having dancing mushrooms or an army of possessed teddy bears by now. But we'll see. Next? Yep, you get the idea. Next? Oh, here we go. Meanwhile, there is quite a stir at the hidden headquarters of the ruler of the entire universe deep inside the S and M dimension. Master Batches! Master Batches! What? Yes, little Foxy? What troubles you so? It's that oath who defeated Bebop 2! He's now in the second quadrant of the Bebop 3 arena! Damn those meddling humans! This can ruin everything! Try to do a little damage control and keep me posted. Well, this one is interesting, although I can't say the PC speaker sound adds to the charm any. Let's keep going. Oh god, the backgrounds are back. I'll spare you. You go on without me. Save yourself! Here's another one of those purgatory levels. Again, you could theoretically play this level forever because you can keep undoing your progress. You're getting the abridged version. Ham and Swiss and Ray! Figure it out! Yeah, not much to this level. Or the one after this. I don't know, I might feel kind of robbed if I had paid $20 for this. That would come out to a dollar per level. Uh-oh. The human intruder persists! What? Drastic action must be taken! Alert the ruler of the entire universe! I am here! What seems to be the problem? Okay, aside from more background torture, this level is kind of neat since the blocks maintain equilibrium with each other. You have to take out one side completely first. So, kind of neat, but it still is background torture. Okay, this level is the closest thing this game has to resembling a normal breakout game and others have done it better. Next. Down with the DSP. 
Ah, the infinity symbol. I think they saved this for the wrong level. They should have used this on one of those levels with the faces where you can keep counting up forever. Knowing this game, this is probably just an omen. This is normal. This is mostly normal. You fools! How could you let that moron progress so far? He came in unnoticed. I should never have trusted a dog, especially a talking one. Guard, what are today's survey results? Well, sir, while our propaganda campaign is having a slight effect in the beta sectors, 73% of the known universe still characterizes your butt as tiny. Maintain the brainwashing and summon my military commanders to the conference room. We must see if this invasion can be stopped. Oh, God. No, don't hit the faces! Oh, man. This level is gonna take me a while. You get to skip it. Oh, this one sucks. Every time you hit the wall, the block counter goes up. I have to wait until I can position it in a back and forth loop. I'm losing some lives on this one, since the only way to win is to edge the ball so it hits the very corner of the paddle. Yep. Look, look, look. Lovely. This one is insane. The ball teleports every time it hits the wall, but it locks up your controls every time it does. So it's like playing with really bad stuttering lag. You might think the concept's easy, but I lost four lives on this level. The controls freezing up constantly messes with my head. Come on, fop. I'll teach you about pain. This is hell. This level is just hell. It has background assault, the face, and the ball speed has increased. You know, I think Arkanoid is a pretty hard game. I can't beat it on three lives, but it's not torturous. S&M Games really lives up to its name. This game is sadomasochistic. Actually, no, it's just sadistic. The player is the one receiving all the pain. And I'm not sadomasochistic, but I feel like I have a duty to finish this game. No one's seen this before. I owe it to humanity. Anyway, I make it on one life left. And the last level is actually pretty simple. I'm almost expecting this to be a trap with invisible blocks or reversing my controls, but I think the sheer tension is enough. I have one life left, but I can do this. Let's bust these blocks and save the universe. Foxy, where in the name of s &M is an infernal intruder? Right behind you, sir. No! Ah! Yes, it is I once again, and this time I will not be denied. Now I am the ruler of the entire universe, and peace will be restored. And by the way, your butt is tiny. So, as this chapter in Mankind's Greatest Struggle draws to an agreeable close, reflect on what you have accomplished, and know that you hold destiny in your hands. It's time to live happily ever after. The end. So that is the Bitbop Trilogy. Not the greatest games in the world, but hey, I'd say it has the best writing out of any breakout game I've seen. I think it even topped Arkanoid in terms of story. The game didn't get as dark as I thought it was going to either. Maybe killing that person in Bitbop 2 calmed Stuart Riffle's bloodlust. Okay, awards time! The first award, of course, Rescued from Extinction. I feel confident that if I hadn't stepped in, these games would have disappeared forever. And now I'm releasing them. Stuart Riffle gave permission, so Bitbop 1 and 3 are officially freeware now. You can download them from my site in the description below and distribute copies anywhere you want. I feel like a game archaeologist. Second award, Dog Monarchy. I've only seen that in a couple other games. It kind of stood out for me. And the final award, does this game kill people? I'd say the evidence is spotty either way. Maybe it's like the ring where you have to show a copy of the game to somebody else before you're okay. In any event, I'm not going to feel completely safe until this video goes up. I feel like maybe I've seen things I shouldn't have. 
Now, I'm not saying Stuart Riffle is a warlock, but if I disappear after this episode and don't release another one, then yeah, I'm saying he's a warlock. Okay, that wraps it up. Stay tuned for the next episode. Maybe. Blah, 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 blah.